this game here tonight. Bill Self and the Jayhawks know what a task they have ahead of them. The UConn is playing extremely well. 7-0. They've won all of their games by at least 10. Six of them by at least 20. But this is the toughest matchup they have had this year as well. Kansas with the first possession of the night. Kristen Newton guarding Kevin McCullough. You can expect McCullough to try to post him up. Juan Harris misses the left-handed runner, and back comes UConn. And Spencer, the grad transfer, lets it fly. Left it a little bit short. He comes by way of Rutgers. Kansas going to want to get the ball up and down the court as quickly as possible. Like that, but K.J. Adams can't finish. Alex Caravan stood in there, took a shot, and back come the Huskies. KJ Adams was body seeking. I'm not sure Caravan had position, but that was offense initiated contact, so they're not going to get any type of call. UConn, an outstanding offensive team. Ranked top three in the country for Hancock. They're shooting over 66% from twos, and they haven't even really shot the three well lately. Danny Hurley feels once they get that goal, they could get even better. As Spencer is tripped, and that'll be a foul. Almost a shot clock violation. The Hall of Famer Bill Self, his 21st season here at Kansas, two national championships, 08 and again in 22. Very often you have the last two national champions leading in a game, especially a non conference game. This is cool stuff. Alex Caravan, though, teams are getting looks, but nobody's broken the ice. A good little fade screen to get Caravan open. And Caravan had a great game against Texas at 20 in that game, especially his play down the stretch. He is an underrated great player in America. Four of the five starters for the Huskies average is better than 14 and a half points per game. And that is without Stefan Castle, the freshman, who will not play tonight. He's getting close. Coming back from a minor knee procedure, but will not play in this game. As Kevin McCullough will be heading the line for Kansas. And Danny Hurley, when we talked to him earlier today, genuinely excited, Jay, about coaching a game in this in this building. Yeah, he was here 20 years ago for a basketball camp and really excited to be back. I mean, everybody loves being in Allen Fieldhouse. It is a bucket list destination for anybody who loves basketball. But Danny you saw Kevin McCullough with Tristan Newton on him. He just backed him down into the post to try to take him one on one in the post, see if he could draw a double. Color off to a great start this year, 18 points per game, better than seven rebounds, almost six assists, and he had back-to-back -back triple doubles. So he and Tristan Newton are the triple double twins. Yes. Newton's had three in his career. Two last year, one already this season. And they're guarding each other. And the switches a lot, so there could be some slips. Newton has it blocked by Adams. The color gets by. Spencer and draws a foul. What a great grab by Kevin McCullough. That's a 50-50 ball, but it was 100% McCullough. Watch this grab that he makes after the ball gets knocked away. I mean, that is a big-time play. Cam Spencer was right there to grab it with two hands, and McCullough just took his right hand and just took it away. I remember when we were talking to Bill Self in Chicago, the Champions Classic, and I asked him, what's your favorite thing about Kevin McCullough? And he said, he'll stick his nose in there. And you're right, 50-50 balls around him are more like 90-10 in his favor. Well, he's a really high IQ player, Dan. He knows where everybody's supposed to be defensively. He's probably the highest IQ defender Kansas has had since Marcus Garrett, and that's saying something. First bucket of the night, they come in averaging 89 points per game. Kansas putting good pressure and denying, really forcing UConn further out on the floor. They're not getting anything going, and the shot clock is running down. Newton gets inside, and it somehow goes in. What a great late clock play by Tristan Newton to get all the way to the basket. The floor was spread, he just put his head down. And Hunter Dickinson couldn't block it late. First field goal for either team. All four points for Kansas have come at the line from the color. UConn plays essentially two point guards. AJ Adams, you give him the elbow, he'll take the, the shot point, and he'll make it more often than not. He's not going to shoot a jump shot, or at least not very many. 
And in that mid-range with that little push shot and short rolls, he's really dangerous and super explosive. Boy, there are some fascinating matchups on the floor right now. We haven't really seen much going on between Klingon and Dickinson in the middle of the play so far as Newton smoothly buries the three. How good is Tristan Newton? Leading rebounder for UConn, eight rebounds a game. He averages seven assists. He's just a playmaker out there at 6'5". A little bit of friendly banter between Newton and McCullough. The Juan Harris knocks down the three. Other than the Kentucky game, he has not really looked for his shot at all. And I think everybody on that Kansas bench, all those coaches feel, they need some offense from him. Well, he's got to take that shot. If UConn's going to go under screens and exchanges and dare him to shoot it, that's what Kentucky did. He had five out of six. But he's got to be more aggressive. And he comes up with a turnover. Great feed. And Dickinson lays it in. Spencer number 12 for UConn he goes underneath these screening actions that's just begging Dewan Harris to shoot the ball and Harris aside from the Kentucky game where he had 23 points shot five of six from three-point range when Kentucky dared him to shoot all game long he's not taken many shots and if he can be aggressive offensively and all of a sudden UConn has to go over those screens that he could turn the corner and really force help and make some things happen. The one he's made tonight, just his second three of the season, other than the five he did in the Kentucky game. So almost all of his work in terms of scoring the ball came in that one game. Spencer is hurt. Looks like he twisted an ankle. Look how far. Whoa, what a block there by Harris. Just pushed really far out. But color into the chest of Klingon, and it goes. And right now, Kansas getting what they want in transition, and UConn not getting anything in the half court. Well, they're getting transition because of just spectacular defense, and Hunter Dickinson is fighting Klingon, and Klingon's got him on his back. Good pass. First touchdown low for Klingon, coming off a 29-point game against New Hampshire, his career high, but he comes up empty. Take it again. He's wide open. So good at keeping the dribble alive and seeing everybody on the floor. Hunter Dickinson for three. And it's all Kansas right now. of everything they want to do in the half court. They're pressuring everything, and it's been extreme pressure, and extending every catch, and putting pushing UConn a step or two beyond the scoring area in order to run their offense in the half court. UConn is just two for seven from the field, and Tristan Newton's the only guy who has scored for the Huskies so far in this game. Had a very good year last year, and he has taken it up a notch this year. He is off to a sensational start. This season, Spencer, whether it was rolling the angle, he seems okay, still in there, but now he's grimacing again, and he's just pointed to the bench. Newton put, puts one up wow. from about 26 feet away, and he's got all eight now for the Huskies, and now Spencer is going to have to leave. Tristan Newton, yeah, he had 19 points and 10 rebounds against San Diego State in the title game. He's just a, an outstanding player. It's like he tweaked it again. And immediately, you're right, he pointed to the bench and said, get me out. So Hassan Diara, a senior from Queens, spent a couple of years at Texas A&M, his second year with the UConn, number 10 in blue, into the game. Adams the kick. Hard to get the ball into Dickinson because UConn is playing off K.J. Adams and McCullough. So Dickinson steps out and makes his second three of the game. Is 10 for 15 from three-point range this season. Now that is that is game-changing because now Donovan Klingon has to come out and get him. And that means it's going to be an open middle without a shot blocker to protect the rim. 7-2 against 7-2. This is this is old-time 1980s kind of stuff in the middle, except Dickinson shooting threes. The freshman Solomon Ball from Leesburg, Virginia.
Virginia with a much needed bucket for UConn. He's now 7 of 30 on the season from three, and that's what Danny Hurley was lamenting. He said, we still haven't shot the ball well. And Solomon Ball is a good shooter that's not shot it well just yet. I don't know that K.J. Adams was expecting that pass from uh, Marco Jackson, and that's the first turnover of the night, turnover of the night for the Jayhawks. Their plans open inside. The hour of the drive, the kick. Aravan can't get it off. Good recovery by Adams. The pressure is speeding UConn up a bit. Not this time for Newton. Even though Newton's hit a couple of those, those are not high-quality shots. Adams elevates. And down with the rebound, Caravan. You have to think the clinging effect of that. You don't often see that kind of size coming at you for a short jump. Now a touchdown low for Klingon. And a foul called on Dickinson, his first. Klingon gets so wide down there, runs down the middle of the floor, and tries to post as deep as he can. And it's so hard to push him off that spot. His footwork is really good. It looked like Dickinson caught that clean, but there was body So the sophomore Klingon at the line, getting more minutes this year. Of course, Adama Sonogo, such a big part of the national championship team, but Klingon's minutes have increased this year. Danny Hurley told us the first time he saw him was in Klingon's sophomore year in high school. Syracuse had already made him an offer, and then Hurley saw him, the Huskies saw him, and they offered him right away. He's practically from their backyard. He's from Bristol, Connecticut. He didn't announce until before his senior season. But aren't they glad they got him? Yeah, Danny Hurley said when they went to recruit him, they watched him for 10 minutes, and then they made an offer. <laughs> He'll come out, and Samson Johnson is going to come into the game. A junior from Togo who suffered a foot injury and that really cost him almost all of his minutes last year. But he's in a bigger role this year, Jay, and he is off to a great start. Well, he dunks absolutely everything. He's not going to score outside of about five or six feet, but he can really run and an excellent offensive rebounder. Harris lost it, keeps it in bounds. Shot clock under 10. For pass. Adams recovers and slams. Speaking of guys who dunk a lot. Well, when Dewan Harris can get into the lane, well, he can force help. They want to get downhill to force help so they can play out of it. He's so good with those lobs and drop-offs. Parker Brown's in the game. Dickinson's on the bench. And he's doing a good job of switching these actions. Everything tough again. Shot clocks at four. Newton takes matters into his own hands. Can't get it off, and it's another turnover. Pull up a color. What a start for Kevin McCullough tonight. This has been a defensive clinic by Kansas. And in Adams, McCuller, and Harris, they have three elite defenders on the floor. Nearly stolen by Johnny Furphy, a freshman from Australia. Ball can't get a shot off. Shot clocks at two. Diara hits. How many late clock shots? as UConn hit when they haven't been able to run any coherent offense because of the pressure. Newton's hit a couple, then Diara. Those are big-time shots. Whoa. Yeah, that's going against McCullough. His first. Eight-point lead for Kansas. We told you, great big men in this game. We'll have Mr. Billis' top big men of the nation when we come back. At the end of the clock, they've been incredibly difficult shots. Two by Tristan Newton, one by Hassan Diara. And right now, I think you're going to have to see more back-cutting and slipping out of screening actions because right now, Kansas has done a great job of taking UConn out of what they want to do on the offensive end. Tristan Newton, who has eight points for UConn, has got to the bench. Cam Spencer, who looked like he rolled that right ankle, he's back in. Alex Caravan, wide open, and he's going to knock that one down. Well, Kansas was switching, and there was a little back-cut action, and Caravan just 
hopped out to the three-point line. Johnny Furphy got confused. There was a lack of communication. Wide open three. Airband 31% from beyond the arc. Shot 40 last year. Another reason why Danny Hurley says, hey, the ball is going to start going in the bucket more. Yeah, Cam Spencer back out there. He went to go talk to the athletic training staff, and he was pointing at the top of his foot where those small bones meet the top of the toe. He did not receive any treatment. They asked him if he wanted to go back into the locker room. He said, no, I can play through it. He's been a really important guy for UConn, and he's connected in a way to Nick Timberlake, who was on the floor right now for Kansas. Timberlake, uh, a transfer from Towson, had it down to two schools, Kansas and UConn. He chose Kansas, and then UConn, when they didn't get Timberlake, got Spencer. And a foul on Samson Johnson. And Timberlake from Towson, an outstanding shooter. He's not really gotten untracked here at Kansas shooting the ball, but he can knock down shots. Made over 233s at Towson. Dan, I think you're going to see Kansas, when he's in there, keep posting Kevin McCullough. And he just went out of the lineup. But he's got a he's got a matchup that he can post. They're trying to do that more anyway. But this is a game where I think you'll see him post more often. Dickinson has returned for Kansas. He's got eight early, including a couple of threes. Timberlake into the paint. Furphy open on the wing and knocks down the three. Kansas really needs somebody like Johnny Furphy or Nick Timberlake to step forward and make open shots. That's been a hole in this team in the early season. And Furphy's got a great stroke. The Jayhawks missed their first two shot attempts of the game. They are 9 of 10 since, including 4 for 4 from 3. Done so much in transition. Oh! had complete vision because there was zero pressure on him. When you got a guy who can see and pass like Harris and a guy who can jump and finish like Adams, you're going to have some fun stuff. Johnson, not a threat out there. Dickinson way off him. Spencer is, though, and is fouled by Harris. Harris is saying he flopped, and Spencer is hurt again. He is limping again as he gets up. And Harris got caught going under and tried to get around, just made body contact with Cam Spencer as he was releasing that shot. You just can't get caught going under here. And that's just a mental mistake by a, a really smart and great defender in Dewan Harris. But you got to chase him over the top, and if he gets a layup, fine, but you got to keep him off that three point line. Spencer's first miss from the line this season. He had made his first 20. And thanks for talking so long, right? Would have announced your jinx day. Exactly. Shot the first. Just you're thinking about it. You know, <laughs> and he's playing through it. You could see, you can see that he is in some discomfort and kind of walking gingerly, but wants to stay in the game. Flinging back in for the Huskies. Color has returned for the Jayhawks. UConn, kind of small in the backcourt right now. I would look to Kevin McCullough on the other end. Run some action where he can get isolated down in the post. And just one of three for Spencer. And that foot had to have some bearing on that and some effect. Again, no Stefan Castle minor knee procedure about two and a half weeks ago. And Danny Hurley telling us they hope he is ready for the Carolina game, which is Tuesday, the Jimmy V that we'll have for you. They'll play in the second game uh, against Carolina. The first game, Illinois and Florida Atlantic at MSG. Well, Stefan Castle add another dimension to this team with his versatility. Maybe an Andre Jackson Jr. type impact maybe not as good of a passer but he's so versatile and it gives him another really good wing defender and he can really rebound and score spencer open the three is short and the rebound down to harris and the color almost took that the other way 
His anticipation is so good. He is playing at an extremely high level so far this year on both ends of the floor. Dickinson a miss from the baseline. Diara pushing it. And offensive foul. Kansas has this not missed a game trying to play through it I've talked to some of his teammates and they just said we try to be there for him in any way possible Can't imagine what he's been doing this without his family nearby Absolutely Chris well said his mom Yvonne passed away on a Friday right before a few days before Kansas went to Honolulu for the Maui Invitational and he flew with his dad and his sister on Monday got out to Hawaii <laughs> A little bit before the game and actually played in the game that day against Shamanat and hopefully in some small way over the last couple of weeks Jay being with his Jayhawk family has helped him deal with this tragedy that he has experienced well, well said both Dan and Chris but this last play we, we talked about Kevin McCullough posting more and he took Tristan Newton right down into the post ducked in and because Hunter Dickinson could see over the defense he was able to deliver that pass for round one I think you're going to see a lot more of that in this game to try to take advantage of his size and his advantage over Tristan Newton. Knocked out of bounds, still Connecticut ball. Eight to shoot. They've gone over three minutes since making a field goal. Donovan Klingen does not have a field goal in this game, and he's again coming off a 29 point game against New Hampshire. He's got one free throw. Just basically subs his starting lineup back in. Newton got off to a quick start for you, Good job by Hunter Dickinson on that head. They didn't know the shot clock was running down. Didn't react at all. You've said how many times has the shot clock run right down on the Huskies? I think the noise has something to do with it, but the defense KU is playing has most of mostly to do with it. Yeah, but the noise doesn't stop on an out of bounds yes. play, stop everybody from looking at the clock. Yep, it's just a lack of awareness. And they may be a little bit rattled in this environment, but somebody has to look up and say, Hey, we got this left. Well, you and I have been lucky enough to see two pretty special environments this week down at Bud Walton in Fayetteville a couple of nights ago and out here at Lawrence as Newton is into double figures. He is keeping them in it. Kevin McCullough went underneath and he just shot behind that screen. Actually relatively quiet by Allen Fieldhouse standards right now. But rattling at home, KJ Adams is having a big night. So difficult to guard that, Dan, in the middle of the floor. That little four versus one screening action. And then KJ Adams so good on that short roll. He can make the catch and make a play, whether it's a shot or a pass out. He averages 11 points per game. He's got eight already. Nearly a turnover. Spencer hands it off. Klingon will bank it home. Klingon got up off the deck and was able to cut to the basket. But Hunter Dickinson is really working hard to try to keep Klingon from getting that low post position. Two guys who rarely play against somebody else their size. This is very unusual. Great pass. Adams rejected. Boy, you don't see that very often, but the bucket for Dickinson, and he's into double figures. Kansas is just quicker to the ball. You know, those loose balls are available, and Dickinson grabbed it with both hands and moved to get it. Well, there's a lot of body contact on K.J. Adams. Harris stays in front of Spencer, 10 to shoot. Clinging for three. And it belongs to Kansas. Jackson, the freshman, fouled by Klingon. And what a great outlet pass by Hunter Dickinson. Dickinson just immediately looks down court, gets it to Marco Jackson, and a smart move by Jackson to go into the body of Donovan Klingon just to pick up that foul and go to the free throw line. For Kansas in transition. It's all been set up by its defense. 
Just the first on Klingon. Jackson at the line. Tomorrow night on ESPN, it's the Legends of Basketball Las Vegas Invitational for men's college hoops. USC and number 11 Gonzaga at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. You can catch all the action on the app as well. Speaking of Gonzaga, two weeks from tonight in Seattle, UConn will be there, and we're looking forward to that one. Donovan Klingon against Graham Ike, another outstanding big guy transferred to Gonzaga from Wyoming. Again, other than that Alex Caravan shot from the right wing, I don't think UConn's gotten an open shot. Everything's been contested. Switching everything. Good defense by Jackson, keeping Newton in front of him. Tough turnaround by Spencer. Rebound Adams. Klingon was open. They couldn't see him because of the pressure. Good pass. A color wide open. Long rebound to Jackson. He'll take it. Inside four minutes to go in the first half. The lead is 12 for the Jayhawks. Newton stripped. Numbers for Kansas. And now they'll reset. Still lots of time. Miscommunication and an over and back. And he worked so hard to get the ball, and Dewan Harris is down on the other side of the floor. No doubt in that. A 12 point lead, as Jay said earlier, as you guys just said, the defense has keyed the offense. They're up 12 0 in fast break points, they're up 14 to 4 in points in the paint. Dickinson's having a big game, McCullough's having a big game. And Dewan Harris, Jay, we saw him go down to his knees right after chasing that ball that caused the turnover. But whatever it was is obviously feeling better now. He's still in the game and showing no ill effects, as that might have been the, the crispest offensive possession of the game for the Huskies. Well, just a side pick and roll in the slot. And Hunter Dickinson just spent too much time on the ball. You show and get back because they can just lob it up to Klingon. But more action out of the middle third of the floor. I think for UConn, it'd be really helpful to try to eliminate some of this help. Harris around the Dickinson screen. Left hand. And clicking the rebound. UConn can get it into single digits. Spencer. Brown wanted a walk, and they got it. One of the few transition opportunities that UConn has had in the first half, and they turned it over. But UConn is 6 of 12 from 3. And aside from that caravan three, they've all been at the end of the clock and really contested tough shots. That's what's keeping UConn in this game in the first half. They're just three of ten from two and just two of five from the line. And again, one of the best offensive teams in the nation in the early part of the season. Really packing it in on some of the non-shooters that Kansas has on the floor. Banked home by Jackson. A wry smile on Bill Self cross court. <laughs> Sometimes you don't care how they go in as long as they go in. Boy, Adams denied Caravan, who's had a tough half. That was, hasn't gotten a lot of touches. Newton a step back. And he, as you said, is keeping him in, and he's got 14. Boy, what a game he is having. And these are not easy shots that he's hitting. He's their leader in rebounding and assists, and he's got 14 points tonight, averaging better than 15 on the season. And early in the season last year, there were people saying, well, you know, UConn doesn't really have a point guard. I think they do. And Tristan Newton started his career at East Carolina, playing for Joe Dooley, who's a Kansas assistant now. He's 6'5", an excellent passer. He's a big-time scorer in well, high you school, and I have one been of the top to six or seven scorers special. in the country. And the top scorer from the state of Texas, but he's made a gigantic impact on this UConn program the last two years. Four for five from three in this one. Harris turns the corner, scooped up, no good. He's tried three or four of those, and that's a shot he works on all the time. He can make those. One time UConn went over that screen instead of underneath it. He was able to turn the corner. Newton with Adams on. Caravan for three. Dickinson holds off Klingon, and it is Kansas' ball. 
the UConn players are yelling it should be theirs. Kansas can go essentially two for one here. Run some offense, try to get a score. Looked like they had a beat. Looked like it was out on Dickinson. But Culler down to the post. Turn around. A strong rebound by Caravan. Chance for UConn to push a little bit. Newton didn't get the foul call, and Adams gets the block. And what a block by KJ Adams coming from the backside. Didn't hit any iron. He just sent it back. And the alertness of the Kansas defense has been really impressive. But if you're UConn, you get a score here. If you can get this down to six or seven at the half, you got to feel pretty good about things. Feel yeah, great. Are you kidding? It'll be Newton. He got hit. Yes, he did. The color call for the foul. His second and three free throws coming for Tristan Newton. He actually got hit on the arm first, which should have been a foul right away. But they called him the color going into him. What he catches him right on there was just as it was released. A good effort by McCuller, but just a little more discipline make him take that tough shot. Because they've made so many of those. Yes. This is a guy who had 19 points and 10 rebounds in the national championship game against San Diego State a year ago. Triple double against Buffalo. Another one against Marquette last year. One against Manhattan College so far this year. Bill Self will use play basketball in this state. Play basketball at Fort Scott Community College. Fairfax, Virginia, that spent a lot of his childhood in Kansas. And apparently, he could really shoot it. Well, that was a big foul on Kevin McCuller. To get this, not just a single digits. I mean, this could be a... a UConn can get a stop here and knock these free throws down. They'll get this down to near one possession game. Two out of three for Newton. Chance to be able to get the last shot. 1 3 1 coming out of the timeout. Dickinson, the handoff to Jackson with five seconds to go. Harris, a shot fake. The runner, no, and the first half comes to a close with this game closer than it was for much of the half. Kansas 38 and UConn 31. Tristan Newton has more than half of the Huskies' point. 40 minutes. But Kansas, I, I think Kansas should have been up more. you got to give a lot of credit for UConn to hit those seven threes in that first half because those were not like open threes. Those were end of clock contested threes, and Tristan Newton is the reason they're close. He had 16 points in that first half and hit a ton of really difficult shots. UConn undefeated 7 0, closest win, narrowest win was 10 points over Texas last week. Kansas is 6 1, their only loss out in Honolulu to Marquette. And it's difficult for UConn to back cut these switches because they're having to run right through the chest of Kansas defenders. Spencer called for a foul as we get you to Chris Buck. Dan Hurley told me in half that he feels like he won the lottery only being down seven in this building after the way that they played. He said we got to be able to stay aggressive on offense, have to be able to get the ball inside to Klingon where they're settling for too much on the perimeter. Chris, thank you. Yeah, Klingon has had, Jay, maybe only a couple of touches down on the block, it seems. Yeah, only a couple times. Now they're going right into Hunter Dickinson and digging in off of it. They force him into a pretty tough shot, and he'll miss it. He's much better when he can get angle to the basket. And he really referred to Dickinson as a technician at the center spot. With how many things he does well. That looked like Dickinson right there, but that was Clinton making that move. That's just tremendous footwork by the big guy to be able to spin off Hunter Dickinson and go to that left hand. He can score equally well around the basket, left or right hand. And this is as close as UConn has been in a long time as Adams is fouled underneath. And McLean catches the ball after setting that screen, catches it about the free throw line, a little shot fake. 
and just pivots right around. That's a big time move by the sophomore big guy. Again, you can see that Kansas is trying to get the ball inside the post. But if KJ Adams, Kevin McCullough, it's not just going to be Hunter Dickinson in the post. Dickinson should have made a couple of threes in the first half. This is that one. Good back cut by Cam Spencer. They need to do more of that. More back cut. Spencer open. Short on the three. And whether it's the toe or foot injury or something else, he is not having a night right now. He's 0 for 6. Or K.J. Adams running right at him. That might have been part of it, too. No, Marco Jackson misses a corner three. Spencer pulling up and knocking one down in transition. And don't look now. They're back within two. And you miss a jump shot. Now, Marco Jackson probably not the best decision. But that led to the transition and the rhythm three for Spencer. The last two national champions, Kansas and Connecticut, and both contenders this year in what is turning into a heck of a game. Harris trying to find Dickinson. Newton is first to the floor. And finally, it's tied up. But a shot clock violation, I think, which happened first. The officials are going to talk about it. What happened first, the end of the shot clock or the whistle blowing on the held ball? Shot clock violation is the ruling. A difficult pass for Dewan Harris to try to make. You don't want to, I don't think you want to be bouncing it to Hunter Dickinson where he's got to bend down to get it. A lot of traffic in there. And all of a sudden, UConn can tie or take the lead. Dickinson foul as they're making more of an effort to get Klingon involved here in the second half. Yeah, just a design play out of a box set to get Donovan Klingon into the low post. And he does a great job of keeping Hunter Dickinson on his hip. Posted low and oftentimes with big guys, they play straight up and down. But he got down and made it really difficult and wide for Hunter Dickinson to try to break contact and get around him. 7-2 against 7-2. Klingon seems tall. Yeah. Newton. Oh, and McCuller thought he got all ball, but he is called for the foul. So it's two free throws for Newton, and it's the third on McCuller. Kevin McCuller just reaches in. Didn't really move into his way. Those things are so tough because they look like fouls. UConn just four for nine from the line in this game. They've hit every, the, every shot they've had contested from the perimeter. It seems like they've knocked down. It's the open ones that have been a problem. Missed them both. Came into the game at 88%. Dickinson's going to try to move Klingon up the lane. Dickinson lost it up and in. What a shot. It looked like an afterthought, but he knew exactly what he was doing. Look at the battle between Klingon. They met, that's old school, yeah. meeting each other at the free throw line and wrestling for the low post. Are we back in the 80s? As we said before, you don't see much of this anymore. Officials are letting them play. Newton turns the corner. Good recovery by Dickinson. Caravan has it knocked away. And it's out of bounds to UConn with just 2.4 on the shot clock. The hard part for Dickinson is having to show on a ball screen and then recover to Klingon. Not just to take away the position that he can get, but to take away a lob look. And two seconds on the shot clock. Caravan will inbound. Newton's got to get a shot off. He did, and he almost hit it. McCullough's trying to post Cam Spencer. They need to look to it. And he visibly frustrated. Came out and got the ball. Now into Dickinson. Well, Klingon was putting pressure on Dickinson. He couldn't see in. Dickinson on the block. Whips a cross-court pass to Jackson. 
Adams into the paint. In and out. But a fresh possession for the Jayhawks. Credit to Dickinson for keeping that alive. And Newton fouls Dickinson to take us to our first timeout here in the second half. It is close. Four-point lead for Kansas. Chris, thank you. It is V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research, game changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting V.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. The color, boy, he is aggressive when he gets the ball down on the block. You talk about initiating contact. Well, he's going up against Tristan Newton. It looked like Donovan Klingon picked up that foul coming from behind. Just slapped down. I'm not sure how much contact there was, but his presence forced Kevin McCullough to adjust that. We've seen Kansas post McCullough more often, and I think that's going to be a staple of the offense. McCullough is not a great perimeter shooter, even though he's having a spectacular year. But that allows... Bill Self to get him some more touches in areas where he can really score and get fouled. Second year here after uh, some very good years at Texas Tech. And it is 42 36. UConn got it down to two. It's back up to six. And the color guarding Tristan Newton. They're going to switch a lot in every exchange, but when he's on him, that puts a little extra size on him. Good back cut. What a great pass into Caravan. That's a great slip on that switch. Anytime there's a switch, if you can back cut, you can find an opening. And the only way to really take that away is if you put extreme pressure on the ball. The color into Adams. What a feed. And Dickinson had it partially rejected by Klingon. Looks like he lost it on the way up, too. Now playing in a touch with Dickinson defending. That's two big people right there. And Dickinson did everything he could, but nobody blocked down Newton on the weak side. And Newton got away with a little push underneath. Just gave an off arm to get McCullough out of there. But a great play by Tristan Newton. Well, two smart players, two competitors in Newton and McCullough going at it tonight. Actually, UConn, their cards are their best rebound. How many times have those two connected? Any time that K.J. Adams sets a ball screen around the elbow, it's going to be a lob if you overhelp. Fifth assist of the night for DeWan Harris Jr. He averages almost seven and a half. Spencer baseline gets the shot off and hits. And again, grimacing. He is feeling it as he gets back on D. He has been playing through pain all night long. Six minutes into the second half, a two-point game. Hunter Dickinson just behind the defense right now, basically going four out. Another shot off by Spencer. Steps back for a tough two. And again, UConn can tie or take the lead. Good recovery there. Dickinson just chasing down that pass and knocking it out of bounds. All right, take a look here at K.J. Adams. When he gives the ball up, he's going to come set a little ball screen right about the elbow. And then he just opens up and wide open. There's no help because he's in the middle third of the floor. That's by design. The color who's got three fouls has gone to the bench. The freshman Johnny Furphy is in. And an air ball on a three by Newton. Newton was trying to buy a foul. K.J. Adams said he's flopping. There's a no call, so they play on. Dickinson up top will probably twist this. Harris underneath. Finds Jackson in the corner. Dickinson's such a good passer, too. They can run so many things through him. Oh, and Harris lost it and very fortunate to get it back. And then Adams fouled on his way up to the roof here at Allen Fieldhouse. Right, it looked like he was Harris was trying to throw that to Dickinson. Thought that's a tough pass, but he's trying he's trying to throw it over the top to KJ Adams. And Danny Hurley not 
happy at all. Adams in the corner. Caravan was watching the ball. And he just backed into him a bit. And Hurley didn't like the foul call one bit. Five fouls in the second half now for UConn to just two for Kansas. Diara back in for the Huskies. Adams getting the toe down. Kansas getting some ball reversals, move that defense. Jackson over Clinton. Well, Marco Jackson can make a big impact on this team. He's a an explosive athlete that's a good passer. If he can add some scoring, that's a different dimension. Newton goes by him and lays it in. Looks like Jackson was expecting Newton to come and use a ball screen. Newton went the other way. And yeah, Newton was expecting the foul. 20 already for Tristan Newton. He's been spectacular in this game. Harris behind the screen. Dickinson. Nope. And down for the rebound, DR. Kansas doing a good job of staying between their man and the basket to take away back cutting. Newton nowhere to go. Spencer. Caravan with the offensive rebound. And it's out of bounds back to Kansas. Boy, the body contact on these shots is remarkable. Talk about going through contact. And Danny Hurley letting the officials know about it. Kansas had beaten Omaha last night. They would advance to the second round, but unfortunately, for KU volleyball fans, they were beaten by Penn State in five sets, where they were knocked out uh, about an hour ago. Uh, that volleyball match was on the big screen in Allen Fieldhouse. Before the game started, so fans could watch it in here. You thought they were cheering just when you walked into the building. Well, that's usually what happened. Good defense on that high middle action by Kansas. Harris into the paint. Five to shoot. Jackson spinning and he turned it over. There's nowhere to go. If he didn't make that initial move, there was nowhere to go. Donovan Glean on the bench right now dealing with an injury to the top of his left foot. You can see him there in pain. He's been biting on his towel. You can tell hurts a lot. He came out after that last time out. All right, Chris, thank you. Something to keep an eye on. Spencer's been playing through some pain with a foot injury and now clinging on the bench. And again, they are still without Stefan Castle. They hope he's back Tuesday against Carolina. But right now, UConn able to make cuts. And pass the ball. They're moving it from side to side. And they're going to get the defense to make a mistake. Newton. Not this time. Tapped out by Johnson. And Newton just out hustled a couple of Kansas players to get there. He just got there first. Well, he and Johnny Furphy had quite a collision. But Tristan Newton's done everything in this game. But Samson Johnson knocks it back out. And both he and Furphy had hands on it, but. Nobody was taking that away from Tristan Newton. DR. Under 10 to shoot. Really good communication on switches. Johnson looking to pass it. He is not a shooter. Newton is. He did it again. Unbelievable. And that is Connecticut's first lead of the night. That is unbelievable, the shots that he's hit at the end of a clock. What an effort by Tristan Newton. And Adams fouled by Caravan at the other end. Caravan's third. You hit a shot like this in a season, and it's good stuff. But he's done it time after time in this game. Those are backbreakers. And Kansas had done everything right for 29 seconds. And gets scored upon anyway. Newton has tied his season high with 23 points. Did that against Indiana back on November the 19th. 
He's five of eight from three, and not one of those threes has been uncontested. Not one. Nothing catch and shoot. Easy open look. Nothing. He hasn't piled up the assists like he normally does, but they've needed him to be the scorer tonight. Adams in the line. One of two, and it's tied at 47. And a foul call against Kansas. Well, Johnny Furphy is upset because Alex Caravan had his arms around him and holding on to his jersey, and then they called a foul on him. So this is not a game for the timid, no. <laughs> Two teams hoping to wind up at the end of the season in Arizona playing in the final four. Spencer, the pass. And the cleanest look of the night Newton has had, and he buries another one. UConn has just stuck with it. And they are running their offense and moving the ball from side to side. And the, when K.J. Adams tries to pick up Samson Johnson on the roll, that leaves Newton wide open, and he drains it. That's some of the offensive creativity you see from Danny Hurley. And this is a beautiful offensive team to watch, but because of the extreme pressure we've seen most of the game, Kansas has taken a lot of their actions away. But it seems to be loosening up a little bit in the second half. It's tough to keep that kind of pressure on for 40 minutes. Newton has more than half of Connecticut's points. Kansas has scored only nine points in the second half. Johnson the rebound for UConn. Well, Kansas has to have some of these open shots go down. And Johnny Furphy got a wide open three in the corner when the ball went into Dickinson. And that can be deflating when you're missing those open shots. Back to Newton. Thought about it. Why wouldn't he? Good job by Furphy to blow up that dribble handoff. Great cut. Wow. Johnson finds Diara and a pretty basket. Makes it a five-point lead for the Huskies. They don't have it on one side of the floor. They look to the other. And just an excellent cut by Diara. Furphy the kick. Harris the floater. Too strong. And Spencer the rebound. Harris won't take that three. He was open for it. He drained his first one. He's now one for seven in the game. Almost a turnover, but Diara saves it. Around the screen from Johnson. Has to run it down again. Puts it up. Murphy may have gotten a fingertip on that and back from the Jayhawks. First time in the last several possessions where it's way too much dribbling. Adams. Wide open in the corner. Furphy. Second three of the night for the freshman Johnny Furphy. Johnson the slam. Well, that was set up by the back pick by Hassan Diara. He back picked the roll defender, and they just threw it up to Samson Johnson. And all he does is dunk. That's his 25th field goal. 21 of them have been dunks. And it's a four point lead for UConn going to break. Jay Billis, Danny Hurley going 94 feet on the other side. He thought the national champion. Dan Hurley, George Brett, his sports idol as a kid. Dad Bob, older brother Bobby, Yankee fans, and Dan slash Danny always said, you know, I couldn't do what they wanted to do. I had to do something different. Had to George, go the other way. That's right. George Brett was his guy. We're here in Royals country. He was a Royals fan and then a Bengals fan in the NFL because he's a lefty like. Boomer Sizen. Phyllis didn't even do a follow-up on the superstition with the underwear. If you remember last year with the Final Four, he wore dragon underwear. Still wearing the same ones, and he's going to keep it until they lose. Well, Chris, I rarely do underwear follow-up questions. <laughs> Just as a general <laughs> As a general yeah. rule. Yeah. <laughs> 
He's also got a superstition about socks, and he'll wear the same ones all year if things are going well. The ones he's got on tonight, they got holes in them. Things are going well. How about KJ Adams gets Kansas back within two? A little two man game between Hunter Dickinson and KJ Adams, and Kansas needs to ratchet it up defensively here. Solomon Ball back in for UConn. Time Spencer. When the shot clock's been running down, it's been give the ball to Newton. Let him figure it out. Ball has to get a shot off. He does. What a battle, and it's Kansas ball. McCullough's slow to get up. So it's four on five as they wait for him to get back into the play. Sure, a foul was not called there because both guys were fouling each other. They couldn't tell. Six <laughs> minutes to go. McCullough wide open. And Kansas leads. Dickinson. He gets his numbers game after game after game. He's got 12 and 9 so far tonight, but only two points and three rebounds have come here in the second half. Connecticut made a run. Kansas couldn't score, but they've retaken the lead without getting the normal Dickinson elite contributions here in the second but half. But they've gotten incredible contributions from him defensively. Yeah. But he's done a great job defensively on Donovan Klingon. Klingon tonight, seven points, five rebounds. That's it. And they turn it over. Klingon just couldn't release to the basket. He said he got his shirt pulled, but Dickinson helped on that screen roll action. And he just couldn't get to the ball with that little lob pass. So this is not part of a home-and-home home series. This is part of the Big East Big 12 matchup. And they were lined up with each other. But wouldn't it be fun to see these two teams play each other more than they have? This is just the fourth all-time meet between these two programs. McCullough in the corner. Kansas now 7 for 12 for 3. Team for McCullough, Jayhawks by four. Kansas still switching everything. And Adams fouls Newton. Kansas did a great job just pitching it around, and you can see the baseline drive, baseline drift. And Tristan Newton just lost track of Kevin McCullough. There was a crowd over there, and all of a sudden, McCullough, there was no screen or anything. It wasn't hammer action. McCullough just found himself open because of a lack of communication on UConn's part. It's kind of hard to hear in here. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> Mismatch. Lincoln guarded by Jackson. Jackson does everything he can, and it's Kansas ball. And again, the Huskies are saying it should be theirs. But Klingon should have just gone right over El Marco Jackson right away. He just hesitated. And Jackson was just kind of underneath him. It's almost like he didn't want to commit an offensive foul. You got to punish a smaller guy for taking switching off on you in the post like that. Backdoor cut. Harris has it. Finds Jackson. It's amazing how many balls Harris comes up with. Dickinson for three. Yes. His third of the game, and it's back to a seven-point lead for Kansas. Dickinson called for the foul. The two seven-footers getting more and more physical. Number three on Hunter Dickinson. Leading his case. Moments after for a foul. So it'll be UConn ball. Under four minutes to go. In this heavyweight battle. Sue Bird, Jason Sudeikis, and 16,000 other folks having a great time tonight. Good job by Kevin McCullough to get around in front after that loop cut up top. Caravan 
frees himself. Too strong on the three. McCullough soars for the rebound. That is a big defensive rebound. Kevin McCullough has been spectacular. Those two threes he hit, plus the defense he's played. Pass deflected on the alley oop attack. Good read by Caravan. Caravan wide open on the wing and knocks it down to get him back within four. That disrupting that lob action. And the read of that play by Caravan led to his open three on the other end in transition. The redshirt sophomore, so important for UConn last year, and even more so potentially this year. Color swatted away by Clay. Ton of body contact as he's going up. He went right into Cam Spencer. Spencer still limping, but getting it out. He doesn't want to be taken out of this one. The Jayhawks have converted on five of their last six field goal attempts. Adams fouled on Caravan. Adams may be smaller than Caravan, and Caravan's a great player. But he is just so explosive and strong. He doesn't need a he doesn't need a step to get up in the air. You see the body contacts is going up for the shot. Just lob it up to him after that initial action. I thought they were going to initially throw it into Dickinson. He might have had a three. He can do a lot of things to help his team win, but he does struggle at the line. Makes the first here. He's two for three tonight. After coming into the game, four for 16 on the season. Inside and lays it in with a left hand. Boy, really hard drive from the right corner with the left hand. Caravan's got a lot of game. He is underrated. Remember, he's playing with four now. Good deep position by Dickinson, but he can't convert. He doesn't miss many of those, but he doesn't have to shoot many of them over a 7 2 shot blocker like Donovan Clinton. Just push him a little bit further out and make him score over you. That was good defense by Klingon. Two minutes to go. Spencer gets the three off. A little bit short. Adams the rebound. Fouled by Caravan, who was fouled out of the game. But Kevin McCuller did a great job of contesting that shot by Cam Spencer. I think Spencer thought he might be open. But McCuller just took it completely away. And KJ Adams is going for the tie-up. Yeah, KJ Adams is a little bit too cavalier with that ball. He had it in one hand. But I guess Caravan caught some arm going after it. So it looks like UConn will go smaller, and Danny Hurley will. It'll be clinging and four guards in the game right now for the Huskies. You could certainly see Bill Self deciding to post one of Kevin McCullough, KJ Adams, with this smaller lineup. This is the front end saved by Klingon. Huge possession for UConn. Newton's been the guy tonight. He's got 26. They're bringing Klingon up to open up the middle. Takes a bump from Dickinson and will go to the line as Hunter Dickinson picks up his fourth. Dickinson up at the high post. 
he can just dive down into the low post and makes him a little bit more mobile, a little bit more difficult to guard. It's not just a wrestling match down in the low post with Hunter Dickinson. And it opens up cutting lanes. Playing in 54% of the season. Again, this is where free throw blockouts are really a big deal. I mean, UConn is very small in that second slot. Except here comes Samson Johnson. But he's staying up high. He's not down in the lane. Three-point game. Uh, not bringing full court pressure just yet. They're in a 1 3 1 half court track with a completely different look to Kansas. He's driving it clinging. You can freeze him and then throw it up. 10 on the shot clock. McCuller from the corner and he made another one. Just nine for 14 from beyond the arc, but now Newton's going to the line for three after the fourth foul by McCuller. And a 1 3 1, if you dribble at one of the top defenders, the corner's open, and that's a lot of space for Hassan Diara to try to cover from under the basket all the way out. Kevin McCuller has hit two or three, three now, huge threes in this second half to stake Kansas out to this lead. Just a 30% three-point shooter on the season of a three for four tonight. And now free throws the Huskies just have to have. They are still, even with that make, just six for 13 from the line in this game. Newton missed a couple earlier, but is a great free throw shooter. 88% of the season coming in. Newton has been amazing in this game. Just amazing. The shots that he's hit at the end of a shot clock, both first and second half. I mean, you make a career out of those, it's all been in one game. Got 28 points now, his career high was set last year, 32. Made all three, and it's a one possession game. Now a little full court pressure from UConn. The 1 2 2, they're big along the back line. Harris finds Jackson, who gets it over. Oh, and he threw it over Adams. A costly turnover. But he didn't want to get trapped when he brought the ball over midcourt. Just keep your dribble. But instead, he tries to make the cross court pass. Bill Self going to talk to him. Left. What do you think they might run right here? I think you want to run something that's going to get into the middle of the floor and get some cutting action. Because you can get a backdoor cut here against the overflow. This has been the big matchup. McCuller and company trying to shut down New Diara with a lane. Great help there defensively by Jackson. The initial call was UConn ball. They're going to go to the monitor. Boy, it looked like Diara had a... If DeJuan Harris gets it, I don't think he's going to want to give it up this time. Here comes the trap in the backcourt. Boy, and he just kind of threw it into the middle of a crowd and it found Adams. Danny Hurley thought that K.J. Adams traveled when he caught it. But even with the foul, that's the person they probably would have fouled to send to the line. It's not a not a coherent press break. And I think the officials say, well, he didn't really have possession. But. Six from the line tonight. Johnson back into the game for UConn. Diara comes out. And 
help make sure they can secure the rebound. That was a big one to make it a two possession game. it over. Newton going the distance and he lays it in. He's got 31. Almost a home run play that you'd run late clock for UConn to get Tristan Newton going down in here as they will try to press and trap and steal and get the ball back anywhere they can. Yeah, it just makes them a little quicker, a little bit more mobile. You have to expect they're going to come with a trap right away. Color gets it into Jackson. He finds Harris, and Harris calmly gets it over and draws a foul. So Harris shoots about 67 percent from the free throw line coming into this one, but I'm not sure Bill Self would rather have anybody else at the free throw line right now. Juan Harris Jr. has been a big time winner for him. He has not been to the line in this game. So even with a make here, it's a one possession game as Klingon returns. Uh, with just under 17 seconds to go in regulation, even with the make. Assuming he makes it, UConn does not have to have a three. Attack the basket. He missed it. No timeouts for Connecticut. Ten seconds remain. It's been Newton all night long. It's Spencer now. Short. Adams the rebound and he's fouled. Really good pressure on that shot by Cam Spencer right in front of the UConn bench. Little screen up top. The over pursuit by Harris, but he got back to pressure the shot from the side. But a pretty good look for UConn, all things considered. And they may be going to the monitor just to see exactly how much time should be on the clock. It's at 1.4 right now. It'll be Adam shooting the two free throws. A rough night for Cam Spencer. One of seven from three, two of 12 overall. That foot injury. Certainly couldn't have been helpful, but they stuck with him like glue throughout the course of the game. See what the clock situation looks like it should be there. So, yeah, they might go closer to two seconds, maybe two point four. Yeah. yeah. It's a big difference. Now, KJ Adams can basically salt it away if he could have made two, but again, for all of the great things he does for Kansas, this is not the strong part of his game. He is four for seven and nine. And he's getting two more here. by K.J. Adams Jr. Not just to step to the line and knock these free throws down, but he has played hard all game long. He's had to switch off on the guards, big guys. And the, the key guys for Kansas have played heavy minutes in this game. And that's going to be the season. He made them both. And a big smile on his face coming back down the court. Kansas will win it. What a hard-fought victory for the Jayhawks here at the fall.